Ladies and gentlemen, in my hand, I have the cheapest monitor that I could possibly get off AliExpress that will tick four main boxes. It had to have a five inch display, full HD resolution, as well as 4K support, and 8.4 DC out, so you can pretty much charge your camera via this monitor. And the last and final thing, it had to be small, compact, and light, which is exactly what this thing is. So my question is, is this the best budget monitor you can get for the price? Let's go ahead and check it out. All right guys, here it is, the monitor from AliExpress, the cheapest one I could find, five inch, and it's called the F5. Now, I know that there is the Philworld F5, I have that monitor myself. This is just called the F5, so this thing, as you can see, there's no like display of the actual monitor on this. I mean, it's really cheap and it's just a box. I mean, on camera monitor, see and capture every detail with confidence. All right, let's go ahead and open this thing. Now, I don't have a Swiss army knife, unfortunately. I just use my bare hands. Well, look at this. This is a monitor hood. So that's what it comes with. And then you have the actual monitor itself, which is absolutely tiny. This is not five inch. Look at this. It's an actual phone. Hold on, give me a sec. I'll get my other five inch monitor. This is my Atomos Ninja V. This is a five inch monitor. And this is also a five inch monitor. The difference is very, very comparable. Look at that, more stuff. Got the user manual, which is great. And the monitor still doesn't have a name. The mystery monitor. All right, let's see if it hopefully comes with a monitor mount. And it does come with a monitor mount, as well as a HDMI cable. So this is a HDMI micro. They will work on Panasonic cameras, Sony cameras. And then we have a monitor mount, which is the side swivel one. All right, let's go ahead, put the battery in and just test this thing out, see how it runs. So guys, can you hold these monitors for a sec? No, that's okay. I've just got a few monitors in my hands that I've been collecting over the years. And embarrassingly, this is not even half of them. So I've got a few tucked away in drawers. And why the hell have I been collecting all these monitors? Well, long story short, you buy one, it doesn't work out well, you get another one, and it works fine for a while, but then you see that you need a few different things like a smaller inch display, or full HD support or whatever. This is a Lilliput seven inch monitor. Great for desks and stuff like that, but I'm looking for a camera monitor that goes on top of the camera and this is definitely not my choice. I have the IOO monitor, which was my first monitor that I ever bought. Seven inch, made a mistake. There's no DC output, so I can't charge my camera via the monitor. And then I purchased the Fieldworld 4K F570 monitor. It's a great monitor, great display, but the only problem was the HDMI is down towards the bottom, so you got cables hitting on top of your camera, bending, breaking, and so I just had to get another one. And then the latest and greatest monitor that I've been using for a really long time is the Fodga A50T monitor. Beautiful thing about it is it has the DC in and out towards the back, and it's also got the HDMI in and out towards the back, so you're not getting cables interfering with your camera or anything like that. And you got your all buttons here, touch screen, Perfectly fine, no issues whatsoever. Now that leads us to the last thing, the F5 unbranded monitor. Why did I purchase it? Well, I have a small camera like this, the Canon EOS M. I also use the M50, the GH1, and the 5D Mark II. I just wanted something small, light, portable, and that had a five inch display, 1920 by 1080 resolution, and that would support DC out. So obviously I can charge my camera on the go. Now looking at the body of this thing, it's ABS plastic, which makes sense. They want to keep it nice and light, and it's exactly what it is. You have all your buttons located on the top. They're well separated apart. They click really nicely. You go up, down, left, right, your F1 and F2 for your quick function buttons, and then the off and on towards the left side. On the side of the monitor, you have your HDMI in and out, and then you have your DC in. So if you want to charge this monitor or power it via a wall adapter, then that's possible. If you want to charge your camera with this monitor, then towards the bottom, you have your DC out, 8.4 volts. Now speaking about the batteries, this takes Sony F970 batteries, as well as Canon LP batteries. So all you have to do is get an adapter, switch them around, and just choose your preferred battery type. Also in the back, you have a headphone jack. So in case you want to monitor your audio and just make sure that you're getting everything nice and clean, then that's definitely possible with this monitor. Now on the back, you have a quarter inch screw for a monitor mount. You can attach it to the top of your camera. 
Otherwise, you can take it out, switch it, and screw it to the side. So if you want to do some shoulder rig. Now looking at the screen, it supports an IPS 1920 by 1080 full HD screen. So when you're out in the field and you're flipping the screen up and down, you're still going to see a nice display. It's going to be nice and clear uh, thanks to the IPS technology. All right, so here is the Sony battery. Let's go ahead, put it in. Is it going to have a name on this thing? Field monitor, still doesn't have a name. Let's just call this thing Unbranded F5. Press the menu button and you can see there's no latency issues, no delay. It just clicks nice and easy like that. All right, so that leads us to the best part. Let's go ahead and take a deep dive into the settings and the functions and see what this monitor is really all about. All right guys, so here I have my monitor and by far it's my favorite budget monitor I've ever used. I just wanna say that. And I've got my Canonius M hooked up to the monitor. So let's go ahead and turn it on. So there we go, 1080i at 60 hertz. And there you go, there's a nice beautiful display and focus is working nice and smooth. There's no latency issues whatsoever. Let's go ahead, enter the menu and see what this thing brings to the table. All right, so picture mode, brightness, contrast, all the typical stuff that you see on a normal monitor. All right, so for the picture mode, you got user and you got dynamic, standard, mild, and then back to user. So I just tend to leave that at user for picture mode. All right, so the next tab, let's see what we have. Language, aspect ratio. Let's go ahead and see what that does. Oh, cool, four by three, 16 by nine. Just scan, panorama, pixel to pixel, and then auto. So for no signal, we've got a blue screen. I might go ahead and change that to green. I just think it looks cool. For backlight, just tend to leave that at 100. Makes things more clear to see. Then you got power on. So if you put the battery in, the monitors automatically can turn on. If you switch that to manual, that means you power on the camera yourself by pressing the on button once you put the battery in. And then the bottom here we have USB upgrade, so the version 1.26. All right, tab three, let's see what we get. Zoom, let's go ahead and try that. Oh wow, this is actually really, really good. Yeah, obtain focus nice and clearly. So I'm hoping that this thing has focus peaking. Uh, so let's go ahead and change that zoom function. All right, so we have four times, nine times, 16 times, and that's about it. 16 times zoom, which is really fantastic if you're further away from the camera, but you wanna check that you're in focus. Zoom mode, this is absolutely fantastic. Some monitors, you can't really stretch out to the screen, you get black boxes. So if you change zoom mode, look at that, you get the whole screen, which is absolutely fantastic. I don't get this in my other monitors, so I'm absolutely stoked that this one gets it. If you want to exit the tab, just press menu, and then we'll go ahead and switch to the next one. So let's go ahead and check out this one. So center marker is off, enable that, and then you get a center marker. So it just helps you figure out what's in the center. Safe framing helps you have overlays, so 2.35 to 1. This is where the black boxes are going to appear if you choose this aspect ratio. If you enable 9 grid, that's just going to help you with the rule of thirds on your screen if you need that. Image freeze, we don't need that. Image flip, no thank you. Oh wow, anamorphic support. Oh, this is actually really cool. Oh, look at that, 1.3 times anamorphic stretch. I have a two times stretch adapter. So if you have an anamorphic adapter, you can definitely use this function. It's gonna help you out big time. And look at that, magnified. So you can have a magnification of your anamorphic adapter to help you secure focus, which is really, really cool. So let's keep that to off. We don't have any anamorphic lens on. Now at the top of this setting, look what we have. We've got histogram, and that's just gonna tell you which areas are bright and which areas are dark. So it looks good to me. I'm gonna keep that on. False color, this is gonna help you see which areas are crushed and which areas are clipping. You want a green and gray signal, and that looks fantastic to me. Really, really love it. So let's go ahead and turn false color off. Down the bottom, we have focus assist. So let's go ahead, turn that on, and see what happens. Color is set to green, and this is gonna just show us what's in focus. So you can see that Coca-Cola can is in focus, and I'm gonna to move towards the plants. Back to the cola can. Yeah, this works really, really nice. There's no delays, everything is crisp and sharp. I can definitely trust this out in the field. So everything green in this image is in focus. All right, press menu, and then obviously you can change green to blue, to red, Actually, blue doesn't look like blue, it looks like purple. Green, and I'm gonna leave that there. Overexposure on, so it's gonna tell you where it's overexposed, which is nice. And then exposure level, so 100 IRE, which is where I tend to leave it. 
ratio marker. I think we looked at this before. This one actually looks pretty cool. You got 15 by 9, 16 by 9, 1.85, 2.35 to 1, and I'll just leave that to off. You can even change your marker color if you want, your mark width, how thick you want the lines to be, and then that's about it in this section. All right, so let's go ahead and check the last one. All right, so this is a quick command. You have F1 and F2 up here. And so for F1, let's see what we can change that to. You can turn histogram on and off with this button. Histogram off, histogram on. Since I'm keeping my histogram, let's go ahead and see what else you can change it to. Oh, and down here we've got false color again. So I'm gonna change that one to possibly zoom. I think that's quite important. Let's go ahead and test these out. F1 is false color. Press F1 again and it's off. F2 should be zoom and it's exactly what it does. And then we can nail our focus this way and then press F2. Fantastic. All right, guys, so this is a really fantastic monitor. Like I said, it's a cheap, cheap monitor that just packs a lot into this little thing. One thing to mention is that I have Magic Lantern RAW running on my Canon EOS M. So if I go into my menu inside my camera, I can just go over here to clear overlays. And so if I'm doing, you know, live streaming and stuff like that, I can just set that to always, and then I have no information display on the screen and I can obviously take histogram off from the menu, but this is what we get, a nice clear display without any information on the actual screen. And then if I want it back again, just disable clear overlays. All right guys, so that's pretty much it. A fantastic monitor, like I said, it's my favorite budget monitor that I've ever used and no affiliate links in the description. Go ahead and get yourself one of these and I'm sure you'll be happy. So that's pretty much it guys, a small tiny monitor for a small tiny camera. In my opinion, this is the best bang for buck if you're looking for an extremely portable light, compact camera that brings a lot to the table. So if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.